This video is dedicated to the Wave Sentinel. We'll go through the steps to update the Wave Sentinel to its latest version and explore its capabilities. I wanted to thank Troy for sharing parts of his kit, which allow me to build my very own version. Currently, the Wave Sentinel is still under development, as you can see on its GitHub page. It is a development kit that you can purchase on his Tindy store to support the work behind. So if you are looking for a finished project, this might not be for you. However, if you are eager to test, progress and share with the community, you are in the right place. That's the beauty of open source, isn't it? Troy has been working very hard behind the scene and even HRAT contributed to the latest firmware. As you can see here, I have the Wave Sentinel ALF built. Here I have the ribbon cable with its adapter, the speaker, the 3D printed adapter that really holds firmly the screen, the cables I'd go to the transceiver here and there is here like the power to the 3 to 3 volt. Here that's the PCB of like the LCD touchscreen module with its ESP32. Now my right part is quite empty and there are still some work to do. First there is a switch here which is really handy. You could put the wall module into DFU mode so you could flash it with ease. And here there is a push button to pour on and off the board. And for sure, there is space to install a battery and a power module. But that's for me for later when I will be able to find a suitable battery. This board has no boot button to enter in its bootloader and flash a new firmware. You only have a reset button over here to restart the board in any circumstance. No, what we need to do is to short the GPIO zero and ground from the debug interface. And this can be done in two way. So either like you use any anything here like to make the short or you wire using a GST adapter here to Troy's case. So here for the demonstration and I don't have any GST adapter available. I would just do a short here so I could like flash the latest firmware. I have poured the board shorted GPO zero and ground on debug GST pins. And then I have hit the restart debug. Now, as you can see, this computer is asking me if I want to connect the USB GTAC serial debug. So I will hit allow. And no, I'm using Google Chrome here and I'm already on the web page, web flasher utility. So I will hit connect. And now you can see here, I have a selection with the G tag. So I will hit connect again. And here we go. The computer is going to connect to the debug and I could install and I will erase everything. Yeah, the installation is completed. So I will hit next and then I could close and restart the board. As you can see, the Wave Sentinel is turned on and there is a landing page. Here you could see with a nice picture what is the capabilities. 
subgigates, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and analyzer functionalities. So there is also two other points that I want to emphasize. Here you could see the version you are using. So I'm using the latest firmware available here. And there is another point really important to confirm that all your wiring is okay. Here we could see the double C1101 transceiver is initiated with success. Meaning here, the power and all the GPIO port are plugged in. Now I could start by just clicking on the screen. There is a Wi-Fi section, but at this point, it's pretty experimental. So you have the Wi-Fi scan tab, which allow you to search for Wi-Fi SSID and join them. In the Wi-Fi application, there is none currently, but later on, Troy told me he wanted to have the Wave Sentinel to act as a Wi-Fi remote. So you could just turn on your Wave Sentinel, leave it on your Wi-Fi network, and somehow connect through maybe a web GUI and control it, and possibly any wireless device within the range. So that will be a really nice feature, really plug and play. Here there is a system menu to configure any system relating settings. First point is related to the Wi-Fi. So this section could enable over the air update. So either you connect to an existing SSID or to a standalone access point, which will be done by the Wave Sentinel itself. That could be quite handy when a few new updates will be released. And on the bottom, it's more related to the screen. So you could rotate it depending how you have installed the module and also change the brightness. Of course, you could save everything here and the About button will display actual um, boot screen we have seen. Who said that the French people are spending their life in their kitchen? Thanks to this remote control, I could step away and switch on or switch off the light. I'm going to use this remote control with the Wave Sentinel to perform replay attack. Meaning I will listen and copy the signal that I will play with this remote control. What we could do with this little flipper button here, we could do two things. On the left, Tesla US slash EU. I think we all know what it means. We could basically send the signal to open the Tesla charging port. Now, the other functionality is to basically transmit any subfile located on the microSD. Unfortunately, here I have no microSD to test it. But I already tested the Tesla US EU. I was listening with my Flipper Zero as I do not have any Tesla to test. The protocol analyzer, which is this icon, I will switch on on and we will see how it behaves when I turn the light on. So we grab some details related to the protocol my remote is using. Now I'm not going to go further, but we could also play the replay just from this. We have also audio test. Unfortunately here, I didn't wire the speaker which is present over here, so I won't be able to test it. Something really unique, I think I never seen in any other project with the RC switch option, you have several things you could change here. There is 10 switch because it's a 10 bits outlet here, meaning your control deep switch, which means dual inline package. Let's 
hold a minute and see what a deep switch is. So some remote control in a small device have several tiny switches. They are used to set or change the operating code or even frequencies. Its switches can be toggled to on or off, as I could do right now, allowing you to configure the remote control to match the receiver. This will ensure that the remote control could communicate correctly with the intended device, such as a garage door or a ceiling fan, for instance. And Troy has designed this here with this interface. I found it really handy. And last but not least, the transceiver stuff. Here, so it's something that you might have already seen with several functionalities. You could like put um, stop and start frequencies if you want to use a scanner. Then you have a package generator. Don't make me tell what I should not like a jammer, you know, but could be useful. It's sending um, one and zero, so maybe you could use it, of course, in a controlled environment. And here, record and play frequencies, which is basically here the same thing as a flipper zero, when you could capture raw signal and play it back. So let's check this out. I will hit capture. So you could see, like when you have a camcorder, you have the record red square here. My seconds here have been captured and I could play it back. And the light is back on. And here, last but not least, configuration, where you could change the modulation and the packet format. There are several presets you could change, but me, I will stay by default. Okay. Thanks for watching this video about the Wave Sentinel. This video will... Thanks for watching this video about the Wave Sentinel. This video really serves as an introduction to the device and its current firmware. No, I plan to make a follow-up video and if you have any suggestion for tests or topics you would like me to cover based on what you saw about the Wave Sentinel, please share them in the comment below. Thank you and stay tuned.